Dr. Marcia Tuft here for part two of Build a Cardboard Catapult. This is going to be create a game and see if you can aim. Okay, so I've got three potential games I can play with this. I've made a cornhole type target. I've got the basket there and up on the door you can't quite see it. I've got a, a felt target that these Velcro fish will stick to. But let's just see the basket. Let's try the basket. That's why I tried it first. Let's see how we do. Now I've got some different catapults here. I'm just going to try one quick test to see range. And I'm going about six feet from the front of that basket. Whoops, that's a bit far. Let's see this one. there. This range doesn't look too bad. Okay, but I'm having a little trouble getting into the basket. Almost. So close. Let's see. too much strength. And this one's not adjustable. Let's see. <laughs> Woo! It bounced in, but it flew off. Okay, so maybe a flat basket isn't the easiest target to use for this. Well, how about looking at cornhole game? Let's try. Okay, so I'm going to use a simple plan do check at design cycle to see if I can improve the game. So, first of all, my project requirements. I want a target that I can use to aim some projectiles in and make a cornhole type game. That's my idea. Okay, so I need something to shoot at. And ideally, I'd like to have a clean criteria for whether it's a goal or not. So cornhole, if it goes in the hole, no matter how it gets there, that's a point. Or two points, maybe. And maybe it's one point for landing on, on the face of the board. We can make up the rules. But the basket, my flat basket didn't provide a good target. Things would be, get hit on the front lip, it would bounce out. So this was one solution. When we tested it, we had one bounce out. So I'm going to say, let's see if we can come up with another option. So plan, we did a test. Plan, we came up with a game. Do, we did a test. Step three, check. Well, this wasn't the best target, so now we've come up with a different sign, and we're going to use that to act and do a second test and see how we do. So right now, we're just working on the target piece of the game. Stay about six feet back. Ooh, okay, this catapult is... Yay! Got one in, so we can do it with this catapult. This is working pretty well. Let's try this catapult. Okay. What can we learn from this catapult? Whoa! This catapult has too much strength and it's not adjustable. So, this catapult may not be a good catapult for this game. We may have to adjust. 
the length, the range. So we've got some tuning with the target and the distance and the catapult. So there's three levers on the game that I can use. This one works, this one works, this one doesn't. Put this to the side. Let's try this one. Six feet. Oops, that got in. This one works. Let's try it on this side. Let's see if I can get a direct hit. Just a little bit shy. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can change the lever arm angle. What do you think? Worth a try? Six feet. Oh, that looks shorter. Okay. So I need Too much. Okay, I might need something between position one and position two to get me a good lever arm angle. But you can see I can adjust range with my lever arm angle. Let's try this one. My aim's off a little bit. Let's see. <laughs> but my range looks good. Okay. for a six foot distance and that target. Okay, so did you see how we use the simple plan, do, check, act, design cycle to tweak our catapult game design? Our first design used a simple target that didn't work great for a projectile. So the target was one piece of the design. The range length was the second piece, and we could have adjusted that. And the third piece was our catapult itself. So by just changing the incidence angle of this lever arm, I was able to adjust my range. So three parts of a problem. We did a couple iterations through this design cycle, and I've come up with something that works pretty easily for my catapults. Now this catapult, has a super strong rubber band, got a lot of energy in it, and it's not adjustable. So this catapult didn't work well for this design, but I've got three other catapults that do. So next, why don't we try to explore our catapults a little bit, see how they work, and what other things we could adjust to get a desired range and hit a target. So in today's experiment, we looked at three different aspects of our catapult game. We looked at the target, the range or the distance to the target, and the catapult. And we looked at a simple 
plan, do, check, act, design cycle. The planning piece is where we kind of laid out how we were going to create our game. What were the key elements? And we had we started with a target and a distance and a catapult. Then we ran some tests. That's the do part of our design cycle. And we got some results and we made some observations about what worked and what didn't. And the results, that's what we checked in part three, our check. And based on those results, we came up with some improvements to the game. In this case, I came up with a better target that seemed to be a little bit more robust, a little bit easier to define success. And that's what we tested in the act portion. But can you see how you could go through this plan, do, check, act, design cycle for each aspect of the catapult game? We could look at, is the range good? Is the catapult good? How can we tune our system better to make it more fun, easier to hit the target, maybe more challenging? Whatever your objectives are, you can kind of use this design cycle to figure out what's working well, what you'd want to change, what you want to do differently. So think of this as a think, test, reflect, retest cycle. And we only looked at three aspects of what makes a catapult game. Can you think of any others? Anything else that we could consider? Well, take a look at this. We could look at different projectiles too, right? Different sizes, materials, weights, and the rules. How do we, how do we make this more fun? Can we change the range? Can we restrict what projectiles we use or open it up? Um, can we set constraints on the catapults or the distance? Or maybe you do something and you spin a dial and that sets the range. What are some other aspects of the catapult? We could drill down on the design cycle on the catapult. So if you watch this video, you've seen that my designs have allow for different lever arm angles and we for a given projectile we were able to get different distances just from that lever arm angle but remember that one catapult that had a super strong rubber band it was storing more energy so is there a way to adjust the catapult with the amount of energy stored either by how much you're stretching that rubber band so that would be a little bit of lever arm angle and the attachment point, how much you're stretching that rubber band for each lever arm angle, or is there a way to get a stiffer rubber band in or maybe even use two rubber bands? So think about catapults. You've got more ways to adjust the catapult system. So we could go through this plan, do, check, act system again on catapults, but is there something else again? What about projectiles? Well, we could look at projectile size and weight, maybe even shape has an impact. Or can your projectile be adjustable? Could you, would your rules allow for you to use silly putty or Play-Doh or something that you could break up your catapult um, projectile or make it heavier? Or is there even a way where you could have a chart or a graph that would give you a relationship that would allow you to predict what range you're going to get. So my challenge for this week is if you're given a range to your target, can you tune your target? Um, if you're given a range to your target, can you tune your catapult and projectile to hit your target? Think about it. What would you need to do? Could you col collect some data, um, maybe measure the distance that your projectiles run, <laughs> maybe measure the distance that your um, projectiles land and come up with a relationship for a given catapult, lever arm and angle and rubber band and projectile weight can you predict the distance? So 
I'm going to provide some charts that give you a data sheet and a graph paper. And you can go to my website, putneydesigns.com, and download these. But there's nothing special. You can create your own graph paper, your, take your data on a sheet of paper. But I do have a couple templates for you that you're welcome to use. And my challenge to you for next week is given a range. Can you tune your catapult and projectile to hit that distance? See you next week as we learn a little bit more about how catapults work. This is Dr. Marcia Tuff signing off. Check out my website, putneydesigns.com. Look on the catapults page for additional resources. Thanks.